Hey, come see us live. We're doing our Rumble Time show September 27th in Los Angeles. We'll be in Tempe, Arizona, and we'll be in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. And so do you, would you agree with, I, I, let me finish my thought from earlier that I lost, but which was my friend Russell Dobular who says, if Donald Trump is allowed to be elected president again, he will have to rethink everything he thought about the CIA and the deep state because they're then they're not as powerful as he thought they are. Now, I don't think that Donald Trump will be allowed to be president. I had a Harvard professor on my show yesterday or the day before who uh, has found out that uh, Google, uh, which we all know works as a defense contractor, CIA, all that stuff, and his part his part works part in you know hand in hand with the deep state if they aren't it, it themselves. Um, they that they are rigging their algorithms according to Dr. Epstein, uh, to swing between six million and twenty five million votes. And he says in his analysis, there's absolutely no way that Donald Trump could win the election based on what Google is doing, and he's figured it out scientifically with data that they can swing votes and it's not votes like people of me or you it's the people who are the undecided which is mind-blowing to me that you could be undecided and but um so would you agree with russell dobular that there's no way that the deep state and will allow donald trump or a populist like a, a, at all to be to become president of the united states ever again well, Google was created by the deep state, if you will, the blob, the foreign policy blob. You know, back you know, two years before Google was founded, it was a PhD project of Larry Page and Sergey Brin when they were at Stanford. And that project was funded by a DARPA grant. That DARPA grant was a joint CIA NSA program in order to use the aggregated search engine results to track birds of a feather flocking together online so that the CIA and NSA would have a political radar system for the use of the early internet by, by foreign political groups or dissident groups that the CIA wanted to back when they were using web 1.0 and forums and static web pages before social media. And then using that joint CIA NSA program DARPA grant funds, they developed uh the, you know, the the back back page, back rub uh engine and then turned that into Google two years later. The first year Google went public, it became a military contractor. And remember, many core Google services are only possible because because of the CIA or the Pentagon. Google Maps, for example, was because Google bought the CIA's keyhole satellite technology. So, you know, there's there's been this relationship between Google and and the CIA, Google and our foreign policy establishment since literally before the, you know, before it was born, you know, be, you know, while while it was in the process of getting pregnant. So, but but getting back to this um you know, Google does have a, a small degree of independence, but that gets negotiated by the blob weighing down on it. So you know how, like I just was talking about the National Endowment for Democracy, yes. this CIA cut out with its you know board being all these international corporations and banks. Well, in early 2017, the National Endowment for Democracy, as well as Michael Chertoff, who was the first head of DHS and is this, you know, he was he's also he was also the chairman of BAE Systems, which is the largest military contractor in all of NATO. It's U, it's the UK's equivalent of Raytheon, Boeing, and Lockheed combined. So you know this. So he and the National Endowment for Democracy research had held a conference where they cornered basically the heads of Google and Facebook's content moderation teams at the time for Central and Eastern Europe because that was where this whole UK. Everything from Germany to Ukraine was this big political hot zone after Crimea in 2014. So Donald Trump had just gotten elected. Uh, it, this is this is early 2017. They get together in a in a smoky room like the one we just described, and I just posted at the top of my feed if folks are interested on X in 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 Bratislava, Slovakia. And so so this guy who's basically representing the CIA's number one cutout. And the guy who's the largest, the head of the largest military contractor in NATO, get together the Google censorship policy head and the Facebook censorship policy head for those regions, and the 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 caption ahead of the video frames the issue as being unfiltered alternative news 
is what gave rise to the Democratic threats of Brexit and Donald Trump. They literally play before the panel starts this big Hollywood propaganda, you know, sort of motion picture film where it where it shows it shows, uh, you know, the rise of media. And it was really good. But then there were JFK assassination conspiracy theories. So things got bad. And then Brexit happened and things, the music gets really dark. And then Trump gets elected. The music starts blaring. It blends to red. And then the next picture is Adolf Hitler. Okay. So this is literally the, you know, the, 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 the sharp fangs of the CIA and the Pentagon. And they're, they're saying this is the end of the liberal rules based international order because after Brexit, we're going to Frexit in France, it'll exit in Italy, Brexit in Greece, Grexit in, in Germany, Spexit in Spain. The whole EU is going to come undone. NATO is going to come done. So there's no enforcement arm for the IMF. The world is over because people are allowed to shitpost on the internet. This is what the context of this meeting was. But the enemy that they declared, and I'm not, I'm not hyperbolic when I say this. There's a direct quote, and I'll post this on my ex account as well. It's unfiltered alternative news, because unfiltered alternative news research shows. This is what they said. Research shows unfiltered alternative news is a font for populism. Populism is the is the will of the people expressing itself against the democratic institutions. We need to redefine democracy from being the will of the people to the will of these institutions who present the the sort of bumper cars on the bowling lane of democracy. And so the, so basically you have the CIA and the and the and NATO telling the heads of Google and Facebook censorship teams you need to stop allowing populist speech because it's going to be the end of the world and you, and, and you better do it because this is a matter of national security. And that's what le leads us to the censorious world we're living in. And are you surprised that half the country goes along with it? How easily the Democrats are manipulated because they're told what they're, they're fighting. Uh, oh, Hitler from 1933. Instead of what they are fighting is a, uh, a TV game show host, real estate magnet. That's really what they're fighting. A guy who was friends with everybody in uh, the establishment loved Donald Trump up until he won that election. He They gave him his own national television show for 10 years. They all golfed together. They all went to each other's third and fourth weddings. Their kids are all best friends with each other. He was allowed to guest host Saturday Night Live. He was, uh, And then all of a sudden... He was donating to Democrats. He was donating to democrats exactly so um so do, can you answer my friend so if donald trump is a, allowed to so do you think that they will allow him to be elected again because i don't think they will i think this is all theater that we have a democracy and that that the steep state is no way in hell I mean, they've gone through, look at all the ways they've tried to rig the election already. Russiagate was a chance to try to rig the election, right? They Then they impeached him twice. That was a chance, that was a way to try to rig the, the next election. Then that January 6th, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, uh, that was a way to criminalize Donald Trump and his followers. Uh, as a, and they hit him with 91 felonies. And then after that, af they, they then hit him with 91 felonies and four bogus, uh, we've never prosecuted a pr ex-president in the history of our country, even ones that we know committed war crimes and ordered torture programs. And Barack Obama didn't didn't prosecute uh, George Bush be, for the to pro torture program because he said all those torture crimes happened in the past. And Barack Obama's looking towards the future. And I'm glad we're not prosecuting <laughs> past crimes anymore because that's where I've committed all my crimes, too. But um, so... <laughs> The, so and they didn't even bring those prosecutions until Trump announced he was going to run again. That, that's that's exactly didn't bring them until 2023. They, that's exactly right. So do you think that I mean, that's just these are all ways that the establishment is trying to rig this election. And John, do people like John Stewart go and Bill Maher go right along with it? What do you think? Uh, do you think that they're going to allow him to become president? Well, on the first question about whether or not, you know, I'm surprised that so many people go along with it. I think both of us, Jimmy, after chapter after seeing how people reacted to COVID, uh, you know, I, I will never again be surprised by the ability of people to go along to get along uh, for the for as long as I live. Ask me that question forty years from now, and I'll say I ain't surprised after after seeing that. But the but the fact is is there's I, I do think that in terms of half the country supporting censorship, these are loose beliefs loosely held or strong beliefs loosely held. I don't think these are actually strongly held beliefs. 
I think this is something that is uh, under the kind of temporary mania of the huge amount of media muscle that's poured into posing mis- and disinformation as a threat to democracy, mis- and disinformation as this grave social ill. You know, it's sort of our Delta variant uh, in, in the sense that uh, I could – free speech still plays a very, very significant role in U.S. statecraft. Um, the, the very blob creatures who are pro-censorship in America – are the first people to pass sanctions on Iran or North Korea or Venezuela if they engage in acts of censorship. So they do need to maintain this kind of strategic schizophrenia about it. But I, I and I think that if if the money for that propaganda apparatus drops away, you will see the people organically sort of mean revert back to being generally pro free speech, even if there are some frills or residual hangups about it from the from frankly the psychological operation that's been done with this whole new creation of this field of disinformation studies yeah. and this this new sort of professorial <laughs> class of fake academics yes. who uh, who present research about you know the disinformations you know threat to democracy posed by you know people doing fitness videos on YouTube um but it you know in terms of the, the 2024 can I, just, can I just say it's funny that the disinformation specialists they never have a report about all the disinformation coming from the government. Isn't that wild? It's never the government that's the lie. And we all know the biggest liars and biggest disinformers are the government. Second is the corporate media. And third, a distant third, are randos on YouTube and social media. But anyway, go ahead. Back to you, the 2020s. That's because they're funded by the government. That's right. Almost all of them are funded by the government. They are the, gov they are the, the blobs mercenary arm. They are the sort of arms of the octopus, not the, not the brain of it. The, the the National Science Foundation has given over a hundred million dollars during the Biden administration to a web of over sixty U.S. universities, all getting money to do full time, twenty four seven internet censorship work. The Pentagon has spent tens of millions of dollars funding this. DHS has spent tens of millions of dollars funding this. The FBI and DOJ even have counter misinformation programs. HHS, F, uh, FDA, CDC all have their own misinformation programs that fund the university disinfo labs that fund the the fact checking organizations pointer and the international fact checking network the big umbrella group for all these fact checkers has something like 30 different government grants just from the state department alone this is a way to get godlike control over the internal political ecosystem of every country on earth so not only is the state department and the cia cut out web like the national down for democracy and usaid funding this at home they are funding it all around the world because it's a way to rig who rises and falls in Nigeria, who rises and falls in Nicaragua, who rises and falls in India. And it has become an instrument of statecraft. It's been uh, it's now a tool of our diplomacy toolkit that that we used to only have for free speech. Now, it was cynical and self-serving, but but I do believe that it is noble in the sense that free speech was a big part of State Department diplomacy. We would pressure foreign counterparts to free their media so that it would be a free and independent media ecosystem free from government control. And this would allow our CIA media like Voice of America and Radio for Europe to penetrate the region. It would allow our CIA-backed dissident groups to be able to rise in political power because the state would not be able to suppress them. But that's how we would use sanctions. You know, we Just two years ago, we passed sanctions on Iran for its government daring to censor you know, the, the revolutionaries during, during the summer there. Three and a half years ago, we passed sanctions on North Korea for the government censoring journalists there. We, we do this. This is stock and trade. Now we're doing the opposite. Now we are we're effectively conditioning humanitarian humanitarian support. It's soft power projection, but but on on democratic reforms around digital resilience, meaning setting up the censorship infrastructure and allowing the CIA censorship army to swarm into the region. This is what happened in Brazil. This is what happened in the EU. This is, the, we have we have formal government programs at state to do this and only this. This USAID has the Democracy, Human Rights and Governance um, uh, program, which that's $50 billion USAID has. And they are spending hundreds of millions of that on full-time censorship work to coerce foreign countries. They even, they, in their own documents, they even have have advisories on what to do if a country is resisting setting up censorship infrastructure. And they pitch their, their foreign counterparts, well, listen, if you don't have the legal ability to do this at home, 
or you don't have the political support, simply call it something else. Don't call it counter disinformation. Call it strategic communications. Call it media literacy. You have a public relations capacity as your election court in the, in Brazil, the TSE. Simply hitch it onto that. Instead of calling it public relations, call it strategic communications. And we'll fold the program under that. They basically not only are committing the censorship crime all around the world, the U.S. State Department is, they are literally coaching all of the co-conspirators on how to orchestrate the cover-up. Hey, do you get stressed because your monthly income just doesn't seem to cover the bills anymore? Well, you're not alone. Most Americans feel this way every day. Everything is still ridiculously expensive, and we're all reaching more and more for the credit cards to cover the basics like child care, insurance, power, and food. It's tough. If you're feeling this way, you need to call our friends over at American Financing. They're helping hardworking Americans just like you tap into their home's equity to pay off their high interest debt and even create some additional savings for to be ready for whatever life throws your way. With interest rates dropping, a company like American Financing that never charges up front or hidden fees and is the perfect partner to help you get into a better financial position. Their salary-based mortgage consultants are saving homeowners over $800 a month on average. Waiting is not an option. Call today. You may delay two mortgage payments. That's call 888-804-0303. That's 888-804-0303. 804-0303 or visit AmericanFinancing.net slash Jimmy. Hey, come see us live. We're doing our Rumble Time show September 27th in Los Angeles. We'll be in Tempe, Arizona, and we'll be in Burbank, California. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. Mm-hmm.